Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Thurn Solomon has got selections here for Sunday, December 3rd. For again, today's play of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We had a loss in hockey with the Avalanche, minus one and a half goals at plus 110 on FanDuel. Looked really good early as the Avalanche did lead 3-1 to one in the first period, and then they did nothing for the rest of the game. They did not score for the final two and a half periods, basically, if you want to include the overtime and the shootout. But the Ducks actually won the game. So Colorado led early by multiple goals against the team that lost eight straight. And then Gibson was incredible and stood in his head for the rest of the game as the Avalanche eventually lost four to three. So pick up a loss there. Look for a winner here on Sunday. And for today's play of the day, going to the NFL, get a look at a late afternoon game between the Browns and the Rams taking place at around 425 p.m. Eastern time. And for this game, I'm going to take the home team. going to take the Rams minus three and a half at minus 115 on FanDuel. Time recording of 8 a.m. Eastern time. Covering why we're going to take the Rams minus three and a half in this game. First reason, Cleveland's quarterback situation is really, really not good. To go through the actual carousel from the entire season, they started off with Deshaun Watson, who is arguably the worst contract in the entire league, and he was really bad to start the season. However, Watson did get better as the season went on. He had that thrilling comeback win against the Ravens, but in that game, he got injured and he is now out for the year. So they replaced him with P.J. Walker, who is really not good either. He also got injured. They replaced him with Dorian Thompson-Robinson, who's really not good either, and he also got injured. So now, in this game, a pretty important game for Cleveland, they are starting Joe Flacco. So you might be wondering what year it is because Joe Flacco is starting an NFL game, but the point is Flacco has not played an NFL game since January 8th with the Jets. Coincidentally, the Jets did not score a touchdown in that game against Miami, but he's not played in basically 11 months, and he was only signed to the practice squad for Cleveland two weeks ago. So Flacco still might not actually know the entire playbook, and he might be a bit rusty since he has not played in basically a year. So I do think that Cleveland's going to struggle offensively with that being the case. Now defensively, which is Cleveland's calling card, they should be at relative full strength, but Miles Garrett is injured. He's going to play in this game, but he did not practice basically all week with a shoulder issue, and he's definitely going to be below 100%. So I do think that he's going to be compromised in this game. Now, it was Miles Garrett, so he still might make an impact, but I do think anytime your best defensive player is going to be somewhat compromised, that is going to limit the overall effectiveness of, of your defense, especially since Miles Garrett might be the favorite to win defensive player of the year. But to go through the actual spot here for the Rams, they've been an up and down team all season long, but they're currently on an upward trajectory because they ended up scoring 37 points last week against the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals are not a good team, but the Rams offensively were really good. Uh, you have a lot of good weapons out there at receiver with Nakua and with Cup. The ground game was really good last week, especially with Kyron Williams coming back, and Williams torched that defense. Royce Freeman was good too, but the point is the Rams had a lot of balance. Stafford looked pretty good, and I do think that the Rams can have a solid offensive showing here at home once again on Sunday. But to go through the spot for both these teams in terms of standings, pretty important game for both teams. Cleveland is in possession of a playoff spot right now, but they might fall apart with the quarterback situation. The Rams, though, are 5-6, and six, but the NFC is really, really weak in that wild card race because, believe it or not, if the Rams win this game, they're in possession of a playoff spot. So the Rams are still pretty motivated to actually get the job done in the spot, and I think the Rams will show up because of it. But they go through the actual defensive numbers for the Browns. I said before, the Browns team is basically built around its defense. But to go through the numbers, it's pretty misleading. So to go through the Browns, they are currently allowing just 19 points per game, which ranks seventh in the league. So you can argue from that stat, elite defense. However, at home this season, the Browns are allowing just 10.2 points per game, which is the best in the league by a country mile. They're allowing four fewer points at home than the second closest team. The problem is it's a road game, and Cleveland this season is allowing 29.6 points per road game, which is the third most in the league. So if you want to break that down in simpler terms, the Browns are allowing basically three times more points per road game than per home game. So the Browns' defense on the road is extremely fraudulent, and I do think the Rams, with all the weapons they have, can find openings against this defense. And I go through the other variable I want to mention, which is the weather in this game. It's in a dome, so weather's not going to be an issue. But Cleveland did play one game in a dome this season, and they gave up 38 points. 
to Gardner Minshew. So once again, the Browns defense, I think, is highly overrated since they kind of pad all their numbers at home, but on the road, they're a mess. And now you have Flacco at quarterback. I think you're going to have some problems with the spot for the for the Browns. But simply put, I do think that the Rams are kind of underrated based on current form. They are still in playoff contention, so they're going to be motivated. And the Browns with Flacco at quarterback and a defense that has some really ugly numbers when you look behind the scenes. I think this line's too short. And the Rams will be able to score a decent amount of points while the Browns will be unable to move the ball consistently with Flacco behind center. So for me, this line just feels too short. I'm going to go with the Rams at home. So play that once again here for Sunday, December 3rd is going to be on the Rams minus three and a half at minus 115 on a fan duel. Bye, everyone.